David HaMelech laments in Akina at the very beginning of Shmuel Bet, upon hearing about the death of Shaul HaMelech and Yonatan, his oldest son. Even though we do not read this Kina on Tisha B'av, the lesson that is learnt by this Kina offers a powerful message for us today. Let me read you a piece of the Kina in English. Shaul and Yonatan, beloved and pleasing in their lives, and not divided in death, swifter than eagles, mightier than lions. Daughters of Israel, weep for Shaul, who dressed you in scarlet and finery, who decked your clothes in golden ornaments. How the mighty have fallen in battle, Yonatan is slain on your heights. The Kina concludes, how the mighty has fallen, the weapons of war have perished. When one reads this Kina, a question jumps out at us. How can David say this Kina for both Shaul and Yonatan in the same breath? Yonatan, his best friend, Shaul, his worst enemy, how can he cry and lament them both at the same time? Think about it from David's perspective. Think about something chas v'shalom happening to someone you love. And then think about something happening to someone you don't know or someone that you've been at odds with. It's not the same. You don't feel the same. So how could David feel the same? How could he react in the same way? To fully understand the powerful message of this kina, we need to understand the relationship of David and Yonatan and David and Shaul because that is the background to this kina. David and Shaul. Shaul and David meet when David is called to the palace to help Shaul with his ruach ra, his bad spirit, by playing the kinor, playing music to help soothe his mood. The psukim describe that over time, the relationship of David and Shaul became a very loving and intense one. The pasuk says, Vayaveu me'od, he loved him a lot. To the extent that Shaul made David into his noseke love, this is the job of someone who is always around the king, does whatever he needs, and carries his stuff. Because Shaul loved David so much, he asked Yishai, David's father, for permission for David to stay for long periods of time in the palace. After David killed Goliath, Shaul asked for David to stay permanently. Now David is living in the palace like a son to Shaul. In the story of David killing Goliath the giant, we see the intense relationship of Shaul and David. David pleads with Shaul to let him fight the giant, and Shaul does not want to because he is too concerned for David's welfare. However, once David convinces Shaul that he can fight, Shaul dresses David in his own armor, like a father would do to his son. However, everything changes when it becomes clear to Shaul that David is trying to take away his kingdom. Only then, Shaul starts to feel jealousy towards David. In the next stories, Shaul pulls away from David. He tries to throw a spear at him, attempting to kill him, and he removes him from the palace, putting him in charge of a thousand soldiers. He marries him off to his youngest daughter, Michal, with the attempt to be a mokesh, a stumbling block for David. David, who desperately, as the Pasuk says four times, wants to litchatein b'melech, wants to marry into the family of the king, Shaul wants it to be a mokesh, wants to use his daughter as a way to catch David and to capture him. During all this time, David is very loyal to Shaul, and he does not understand why the abrupt change in their relationship. He even turns to Yonatan and says, Ma asiti, ma avoni, ma chatasi, lifnei avicha, ki nafshi. What did I do to your father? What sin could I possibly have done to make your father want to kill me? In David's mind, there is only one way to rationalize Shaul's behavior, and that is to say that Shaul was misinformed about something that David wanted to do. Therefore, twice, David tries to fix this misinformation. When Shaul does not see him, but he sees Shaul, instead of hurting Shaul, he takes something from Shaul, a piece of his coat, a pitcher, a spear, with the attempt to tell Shaul the the very big message of, I'm not trying to kill you. I could have, but I didn't. So clearly you've been misinformed that I am trying to hurt you. Shaul, of course, promises twice that he is not going to harm David, but David cannot trust Shaul and therefore must run away and live amongst the plishtim until the day Shaul dies. This is the relationship of David and Shaul. Now we have David and Yonatan. Their relationship is entirely different. David lives in the palace for long periods of time and becomes like a brother to Yonatan. The intense relationship of David and Shaul could have caused jealousy and rivalry to come in between David and Yonatan, especially because Yonatan was next in line for the monarchy, and he could see David as a threat to his birthright. But the Pasuk says the opposite. V'nefesh Yonatan nechshara b'nefesh David, v'ya'aveu Yonatan k'nafsho. And their souls were connected, and Yonatan loved David like he loved himself. Yonatan realizes that David is going to be the next leader, and he is at peace with that. 
It is one thing for Yonatan to befriend David. It's another thing for Yonatan to choose David over his father, the king. And he does that two times. The first time, Yonatan tries to reconcile between Shaul and David, and he's able to make peace between them, bringing David back to the palace. But the second time, he is not able to make a reconciliation, and Shaul basically almost kills his own son by throwing a spear at him. This is the relationship of David and Yonatan. Now let's flash forward to Shemuel Bet. A man comes from the battlefield to tell David that Shaul and Yonatan have been killed. David and the Jews with him mourn for Shaul and for Yonatan. As the Pasuk says, and they mourn and they cry and they fast until evening for Shaul and Yonatan, his son. The Pasuk even putting Shaul before Yonatan. After this, David laments both of them with our kina. Now back to our original question. How can David say the same kina for Shaul and Yonatan when his relationship with them is so different? One tried to kill him, one tried to save him. How can he possibly say, Shaul and Yonatan were beloved and pleasant in their lives. I think the answer to the question is a very powerful message for us. In David's kina, he is focusing on two beautiful relationships. The relationship he had with his best friend, brother-in-law Yonatan, and the relationship he has with his father figure, Shaul. In this kina, he focuses on the earlier times in his relationship with Shaul, where it was strong. Number one, we see in the Kina, he calls Shaul a gibor five times. And that reminds us our original description of Shaul in the very beginning of Shmuel Aleph as a gibor chayo. David also says, Me'areyok gaveru, stronger than lions, reminding us of the story of when David tried to convince Shaul to let him fight Goliath by saying he killed a lion with his own hands. David also talks about in the Kina, Shaul's shield and, sh and Shaul's sword, not saying anything about his spear, which of course he used to try to kill David. And finally, David talks about the Jewish women crying over Shaul, reminding us of the Jewish women who used to come out to celebrate the victories of David and Shaul. But it is not just during the Kina that David sees Shaul this way, but always. Even when Shaul was chasing after David and trying to kill him, David would call out to him and say, Avi, my father. And Shaul would respond to him and say, Bini, my son. The bond was always there. Even during the worst times, when Shaul was chasing David down, they were still like father and son. There are two models of relationships being described here, which are prototypes for the so many relationships that we have in our lives. Number one, the relationship of absolute love and friendship, where it is hard not to feel jealousy and anger at times. The David and Yonatan model teaches us that the success of one may limit the success of the other, but we need to see beyond the zero-sum game and focus on the love and the friendship. This is a message of avas achim, unconditionally loving your friend, not allowing room for jealousy, and putting your friend first, and being selfless with the ones we love. But there is a second message, the message of the complicated relationship, the relationship of David and Shaul. There is love, but there is also hatred. There is respect, but also jealousy and animosity. Still, David was able to put aside all the bad feelings that he had with Shaul and focus on the positive and treat him with love and respect at the end of his life. He focused on the avi aspect of their relationship and set a kina for his beloved father-in-law. This perspective on a complicated relationship can model for us how to commemorate and focus on the positive components of a relationship, not letting the negative aspects remove the closeness engendered by the happy times. Many relationships are complicated. There are good times and bad times. Hopefully, not times as intensely bad as Shaul chasing David, but still hard times. We need to learn from David's kina to be able to recall and focus on the good in all of our relationships, to, to show emotional sophistication, to channel our emotions productively towards the positive elements of each relationship. Maybe through this mature and loving approach to those people dear to us, next year we will no longer be saying keynote on Tisha B'Av, but rather we will be celebrating the ultimate celebration that David had prayed for, the opportunity to build the Beit HaMikdash.